Hello and welcome to Monday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic and what ought to be a very special video today. You can see I'm faced with a blank Sudoku at the moment and that is because I've been asked to open today's puzzle live on stream um, and I'm very happy to do that given that the feedback about this puzzle um, has been, should we say, dramatic. Um, two of our testers have used words like best Sudoku ever to describe this puzzle and Mark also is extremely effusive about it and you know normally I would um, treat that with a pinch of salt but, but, but it, as he's been backed up by testers as well I think actually we are onto, onto the real thing here. Uh, it's by a constructor called Resar who has appeared on the channel before um, and they published this channel or uh, this this puzzle on our discord server and also on logic masters germany now i've resisted going to that page to have a look at the comments because obviously i'd then see the puzzle but um apparently it has, it's proved very popular um anyway so should we should we have a look let's have a look at the puzzle let's check my hopefully my browser will work here okay right now i do have the rules for this um now this, well, it's obviously an extremely minimalist construction. <laughs> um, let me read you the rules. We've got normal Sudoku rules apply. Cells separated by a knight's move in chess may not contain the same digit. So if we treat the, the given digit that we have got, imagine this was a chess knight. It could bounce to a few different places in the grid. None of these squares could contain a nine. Um, which is obviously a, a, it's a restriction, but in a puzzle with only one digit, it's not a massive restriction. And then digits increase along thermometers starting at the bulb end. So we have some thermometers in the grid. Now, normally in a thermometer Sudoku, you have at least two or three long thermometers. Here we've got, is the longest thermometer, is that five length five? Okay, well this, this is, this is along the lines of the miracle Sudoku then, isn't it? Because this is this is absurd that this has a unique solution. Um, well, anyway, it must do. It must do. The testers are, are using these incredible adjectives about it. So I'm very much looking forward to trying it. Before I do, um, just a quick reminder to check out um, the recent bonus content we've put out on our Patreon channel. Uh, we've got Yoka Van Veen and Dahl's Puzzle Hunt, um, which is free. It's completely free. Just go to our Patreon page and you can download it. And also the walkthrough of our, um, or the walkthrough video for our Sudoku Puzzle Hunt, um, which is obviously Harry Potter themed and has uh, I think given a lot of people a lot of pleasure and that's available for anyone who's a three dollar patron So there's a link under the video as usual uh, To the patron page. There's a link under the video if you want to play this puzzle to click just click on the link that will take you to this uh, This web page where you'll be able to play on whichever device takes your fancy and with that let us get cracking um, I have no idea how to so maybe we have to look at the longest thermometer. Is that where we're meant to start? We've got a five cell thermometer. So obviously this square can't be higher than a five because if it was, we'd have a six and then we'd have to increase. We go seven, eight, nine, and then we couldn't put a 10 in this square. So we know this square has to be one of the digits from one to five. This. Um, I am beginning to entertain the idea of some sort of collusion to troll me this time. Maybe Mark has instructed the testers to send this puzzle over with this. It's a total waste of my time, if so, because this is not... I mean, there's not even... There's no obvious way to start this at all. <laughs> the nine, nine can't be in those squares. It can't be in this square because of the knight's move constraint. It can't, nine can only go at the ends of thermometers. So if a nine is on a thermometer, you can never put it anywhere but at the very end. Otherwise, obviously the next cell up would have to be higher than a nine, which is impossible. But in terms of the central box, you can see that 
I mean, actually, the three thermometer cells are all the ends of their thermometers, so the nines could absolutely go there. Maybe ones, ones are restricted, are they? So ones can only go on the bulb ends of thermometers. So in box two, where can the one go? It can still go in five different cells. Is there something about the way these thermometers... We've got four bulbs. Uh, maybe that's it. We've got four bulbs in column seven. So all of these have to be relatively small numbers. Apart from this bulb, they're all one, two, they're all of length four. But still... It's still not enough, is it? It's not enough of a restriction. Um, so, ah, now the bulb end of this thermometer does, if we look at how it impacts on the other thermometer, the bulb end of this thermometer, whatever you put in this cell, you can't place it on this thermometer look. Because, let's just put a, a 1 in here, just for the sake of exposition. And actually, no, 1's a silly choice. So let's put 5 in here. If this was a 5, you can't place a 5 in either of those two squares because of normal Sudoku rules. But these two cells are actually a knight's move away from this position. So, so whatever you put in this cell, you can't put... Oh, good grief. No, okay, right. Now, all of a sudden, I now think this puzzle might be solvable. And that's because <laughs> these thermometers have been designed in such a way. Look at... Oh, this is, this is, this is really... Right, right. Now, I'm beginning to understand why people are using these adjectives about this puzzle. Let's consider this cell. Where can this go on this thermometer? I don't think it can go anywhere. Let's just try the five in this position. If we try five in this position, uh, it, it's ruled out of both of those in the row and these two squares by the knight's move. Let's try five in this position. It sees these, ah, oh, this is unbelievable. This pattern of thermometers is unbelievable. A five here, it rules out these two squares normally, those two squares by the knight's move. A five here sees every square naturally. A five here, it's that is amazing. A five here sees those two squares by knight's move. So in fact, every single cell on this thermometer cannot have a repeat on this thermometer. And it, so it works the other way around, of course. This cell, where can you put this cell? You're never going to be able, I mean, it's just, it's just symmetrical logic. So this thermometer and this thermometer contain, this is unbelievable, contain different digits and there are nine cells. This is a five cell thermometer. This is a four cell thermometer. So this is like an extra region in the grid. It's like an extra three by three region with a thermometer constraint and an anti-night constraint, obviously, but the... These yellow cells have to contain the digits one to nine. And that... Okay, well now I can use at least I can get started here with some pencil marks. So where does the nine go in these yellow skirt cells? It must, it must be at the end of the thermometer. So the nine must go in one of those two squares. Where does the one go? It must go in the bulb end of a thermometer. Uh, so you can't have a one Oh, you're having a Jesse. 
Oh my goodness me. Oh my goodness me. The this pair of thermometers have the same property. Oh my goodness me and look. Oh this idea is sub it's sublime. It makes me want to cry. Oh my god. That is unbelievable. <laughs> this these two thermometers work the same way as these two thermometers. Every it does. Every cell on this thermometer sees every cell on this thermometer. Look, let's do it again. If this is a five, we can't put a five here. It's a night's move away. If this is a five, that's a night's move. That's a night's move. That's in the row. A five here, that's in the column. Those two are night's moves. A five here. Those two are ruled out and that is a night's move. Now why is this why is this so clever? Well look <laughs> I'm I'm lost for words with this. This is just gorgeous. This is a, a three cell thermometer and a four cell thermometer. So this region here has to contain seven different digits. Well where could a nine go in these in these seven cells. A nine can only go at the end of the thermometer. It could only go in one of those two squares where it can't go. So there is no nine in these seven cells. Where would the one go if there was one in these seven cells? It would have to go in the bulb end of the thermometer where it can't go. So this region, this yellow cell region here, contains the digits two to eight inclusive. This region at the bottom contains the digits 1 to 9 inclusive. So, so given we know that the lowest, there's got to be a 2 in this region because there's no 1, the 2 will have to be at the bulb end of the thermometer or one of the thermometers. So there's definitely a 2 in one of these two squares. And similarly, as we know, there's got to be an 8 on these thermometers, the 8 will have to go at the very end of its thermometer because we can't put a 9 on either of the thermometers. And oh my goodness me, this, this continues now. As we know one of these two squares is a 9 and now neither of these two squares can be an 8 because there's an 8 in box 5 already. Where does the 8 go in this region? Well, it's got to be it's got to be just below the 9. So if this was a 9, this would have to be well actually it doesn't actually have to be on the same thermometer, but it does have to be in one of those two squares. In fact, it does actually have to be on the thermometer that the 9 contains because it's not going to be at the end of its thermometer. Therefore, the next digit up on that thermometer will have to be the 9. So the 8 is in one of those two positions. And look, we get a domino of 8s in boxes 5 and 8. And we can ask the question, where does an 8 go in column 4? Well, it can't go here and it can't go here. So it's going to be in one of those two positions. Well, it definitely can't be there. An 8 there would mean we we could we can't even put a 9 here, but obviously this square would have to be higher than a 9, and it can't be. So the 8, we get an 8. That's an 8. This is a knight's move away from this 8, so this can't be an 8. There's an 8 there. There's an 8 there. Now this must be the 9 for the reasons we discussed. 9, 9. This must be a 9, because we can't place a 9, a knight's move away from this 9. We've got the same thing going on, haven't we? The these <laughs> these this pattern here forms um, what's that going to be a six cell region, and this six cell region. Well, I'm not sure. I'm not sure yet what it definitely doesn't include, actually. 
but it is interesting that every cell on these thermometers sees the other thermometer. So this has to be a distinct set of units. This is the idea, the execution is just unbelievable, isn't it? What, what a conception. But now we've got to, we've got to try and actually solve the puzzle. Right. Oh, yeah, 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 yes. So now I'm wondering where we put eight in this column. Because I don't think, remember I can't now put an eight in any of the thermometer squares because these two little regions have already got their eights. Now eight can't go here because of that eight. Eight can't go here because of the knight's move. So eight can only live at the top of the grid. This eight sees that square by knight's move. Obviously can't repeat an eight on the thermometer. So this becomes an eight. And there must be an eight hidden in one of those cells in box nine. I mean, it's still pretty remarkable at this point that this puzzle solves actually, isn't it? Because Well, do we just keep doing this now with sevens and sixes and fives? Let's look at set. Where does seven go on these thermometers now? It must be the next highest cell. So it must either be here or here. It's either got to be the end of this thermometer or just before the end of this thermometer. So there is a seven in one of those two squares. Now we have to put a seven. Now this can't be a seven now. And obviously... Once this can't be a seven, you can't put a seven on this thermometer because the next digit up will be an eight or a nine, which we've already got in this nine cell region. So the seven must go here. Where does nine go in column seven? Nine can't go here. It can't go on a thermometer. So nine is forced into this cell. Nine must be in one of these two cells. Seven is quite interesting in box eight, look, because of the knight's move property. Seven can be ruled out of these squares naturally and those two squares by knight's move. So seven must live in one of those two cells. No. <laughs> Where does seven go in box five? These sevens are pencil marks, so we can rule the seven out from those two squares. The seven in column six is in one of these two positions, so neither of those two squares can be a seven. You can't overlay a seven on an eight or a nine. So there are two possible positions for a seven. Well, let's think about this one. Could this be a seven? And the answer is no, because it rules the seven out of both of those squares. This one by knight's move, this one because it's in the same box. So this can't be a seven, and this is a seven. <laughs> oh, now look, where does seven go in box two? It can't go there, so it must be in one of two, two cells. So... I'm so tempted to look at sixes now. I really am. Um, it's quite interesting that this square now can't be a seven as well, because if this was a seven, it would rule a seven out of both positions in box two. Um, no, I've just, I want to look at sixes. Let me look at sixes. So there's got to be a six in this region. And it's got to be the next highest digit. So it's either going to be here or here. Okay, that's... I don't necessarily see anything about that. So let's look down here. Six has got to be either here or here. So can we see anything clever about this? So if this is a six this is a six and if this is a six 
because this is a knight's move away, this will be a six. So we, we've only got two possible configurations for the sixes. Ah, got it, got it. This, this is impossible because I now can't put a six. I don't think I can put a six in column seven. So this would be on the same thermometer. That doesn't work. This would be in the same. In fact, maybe I should just put the sixes in to show him. I think it'll be easier. So this can't, this would be on the same thermometer. So that doesn't work. This is in the same row. That doesn't work. This is a knight's move away from both sixes. That doesn't work. This is on the same thermometer as this six. This is in the same box. This is in the same box. So there is now nowhere to put a six in column seven so that doesn't work for certain so if these are not the sixes the sixes must be here and here unbelievable this the geometry of this puzzle is just <laughs> it is an absolute joy to behold now can we get anything Well, one, one question I'm now, yeah, okay, look, now we can uh, keep focusing on this column again. We've got to put a five in this column now, and we can't put a five in either of those squares, because a five here would require a six here. That would repeat the six in the region. We know that all of these digits are different because of the knight's move logic. So neither of those can be six, sorry, five. This can't be a five because there would need to be a digit between five and six. You can't put 5.5 .5 in a Sudoku. This is not five. If this is a five, this square would need to be a six or a seven, which it can't be. So five lives at the bottom of this column, but we still need to put a five. Oh, oh yeah, okay. We need to put a five in this region. Well now, it can't go in either of those two squares or here. So it must be on this thermometer and it must be next to the six. So it must be there. The five is massively powerful by the knight's move. All three of those positions are ruled out. Um, these two because of knight's move, these by Sudoku. So five must be in one of those squares. Um, there does, uh, there does have to be a five in this seven cell region here, but it could still be in either of those positions, I think. Okay, so in this region, we've got, we've placed five, six, seven, eight, and nine. We have to place one, two, three, and four. Right, but we, ha but these two squares can't be two, so these have to be either one, three, or four. Well, not, none of them can be four, because if any of them are four, you'd have to put a five or higher next on the thermometer, and that's impossible, because five, six, seven, eight, and nine have all been used up. So this square and this square would become impossible. So this can't be. This can't be four, it can't be two. This is a one, three pair. This is a two, four pair. So, so now, if, yeah, we're gonna get another pairs now, aren't we? If this is a one, three pair, we still haven't put two and four in this nine cell region. So two and four go into those two squares. And two and four here, we still need to put three and five into these two squares to complete all of the digits now appearing on these in that seven cell region other than one and nine. So Okay, so what what does this tell us? <laughs> um Well, neither of these two squares now, because there's a two, four pair here, 
You can't put 2 or 4 in either of those squares. Because obviously if you try, for example, to put a 2 here, you'd rule a 2 out from both of those positions. I'm not sure how that... I can't quite see how that works, though, I have to say. Um... Okay. I mean, it's not surprising that I'm getting stuck here. This... There's so little information in this puzzle. Um, 3, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, This square. This square. This is a naked single. This is the bizarrest naked single you will ever see in a Sudoku. But it, it can't... It's got to be a 6. <laughs> it can't be a 1 or a 3. Because... These two squares see this square either by knight's move or just because they're in the box. It can't be a 2 or 4 because obviously this square sees both of those squares by classic Sudoku. It can't be an 8 or a 9 by knight's move and it can't be a 5 or a 7 because they share the box. It can only be a 6. This, this is an absolutely extraordinary puzzle. This 6 now, oh, not quite, look. Um, no, not quite at all. Six must be in one of three positions there. Six. Ah. Oh, now hang on. Six is... Where do we put six in this box at the top? This this can't be a six. Oh wow! This can't be a six because if I make this a six, this has to be a seven, and it can't be because if this is a seven, it rules a seven out of both of those squares by knight's move. So given this six and given this can't be a six, this oh there's a six seven pair. This can't be a six either, obviously, because we'd need two digits between six and eight on this thermometer that's not possible so six there's a six seven pair here which means this can't be a six so there's a six seven pair here so this six now rules out that this is a six so that's a seven that's a six Seven must live in one of these two squares by Sudoku. Six must live in one of these two squares by Sudoku. Six is locked into one of three positions in box four. Five, six. So there's got to be something, I think, that I can... There must be a clever trick we can do with these pairs. I've just got to work out what it is. Um, maybe it's... Ah, maybe it's this square. Because this... Yeah, this square is restricted. This square is restricted because it can't be... It can't be 6, 7, 8 and 9 in the box. And it can't be 5. And it can't be 2, 4 for the reasons I mentioned before. So this can only be one or three. Now, oh, not quite. How can we rule out? Oh, good grief. Good grief, it is this three, five pair that resolves what this is. Time after time, Resar is embedding logic in this puzzle that is just sublime. Let's Look at the effect of this square on box seven, box eight, I should say. Whatever's in this square, where does it live in this box? You can see that it has to make an appearance in this square. So this square and this square are mirrors of each other. But if this square and this square contain the same digit, where do we put that digit in box five? Well, by Sudoku, it's gonna to have to go there. 
So these three digits here are all the same. But this digit sees this square and this square because of the knight's move and normal Sudoku rules. So this square definitely can't be a three because it would rule three out of the thermometers in this pattern. And there needs to be a three in one of those two squares. So this square can't be a three. Therefore, those three squares all have to be one. That is, I hope you guys agree with me. This is just unbelievable. It's unbelievable setting. Um, okay, now that, is that important? Surely it's important. How? How is it important? So there must be a three now in one of those squares. Look, because we know these squares are a two, three, four, triple. So there's a three in one of those two squares. So there's a three in one of these three squares. Um. Ah, now maybe this square I should focus on again because this this square can't be six or seven. So this square has a maximum value of a five. Four, it's got to be three, four or five. It can't be less than that because then we'll have a problem filling this square. So this square has to be two, three or four and it can't be three because of the threes down there. So this is two or four. And that therefore you can see there's a two, four in one of these two squares. These three squares all have to have the same digit in them again. The one, of course, here sees that one by knight's move. So this is a three, this is a one. Therefore, this is a four, this is a two. Therefore, this is a four, this is a four, this is a five. Oh my goodness. Now, now surely this three sees that square. So this is a three, this is a two. two oh, there's a two seven pair in this box at the bottom now because of these twos. And we can't put a two and knights move away. In fact, there's a three in one of those two squares by Sudoku. And again, the knight's move restriction. Oh, ah, and the three five pair as well. Look, the fives work the same way. So now eight must be in one of those two squares because it can't be in these squares because of Sudoku. So eight, eight. This can't be an eight. Oh, nearly. Eight's got to be in one of those squares. These squares have got to include a two. That can't be a two look because of the two there. Oh, it's so close to resolving itself. <laughs> um, so these two squares have got to be an eight, nine pair look. If we look at row eight, we've got the three, five here. So we just need to place eight and nine somewhere. now. Unfortunately, neither this 8 or this 9 or this 9 reach these squares, so I don't know how to resolve that just yet. So, hmm. Maybe these squares. This is a 2, 3, 5 triple. Oops. So can we, well this can't be two obviously because it's on the thermometer. So it's got to be, there must be a way I think of resolving this top thermometer now. Just can't quite see what it is. Four can't go here or here. So four is locked into one of those cells. So, f f ah, 
Now four in this box all of a sudden gets placed because of the four here and the four's pencil mark there. So this must be a four. Two now must be in one of those two cells. Uh, it's still not quite, can't quite get it resolved. I'm so close to figuring this out. Fours must be in one of these two squares. Oh, I don't believe it. Where does four go in row two of the grid? This four sees that square. These fours see those two squares. So this is the four because it's a naked single so that's a five that's a two and that's a three so presumably that is going to be very important this two now resolves the two three pair up there there's got to be a uh, three is forced into here because of the knight's move restriction therefore this square becomes a three this three fixes the three and the five where does five now go in this box? Can't go here, so it's got to be in one of those two cells. This five sees that because of the knight's move, which places a five here. This is a two, three pair, which I can't resolve. So, I presume something, well let's actually look at this row. This has got to be the 6 now, because it needs a 6. And we know this can't be a 6, so this must be a 7. 7 now falls into one of those two cells. These squares have got to be 1, 5 and 9. So 5 lives up here. Oops. Nine, ah, nothing quite reaches these squares. Three, five here. No, I can't quite get this figured out. I think, again, I'm close, but not quite close enough. Um, one, four, and one, four, and eight into those positions. So this square's got to be a 1 or an 8. This square's 1, 4 or 8. This square is 1, 4 or 8. Take a step back. Ah, the 3 here fixes the 3 and the 2. So 3 must go here now by Sudoku. 2, the 2 now fixes this bounces back over here. Look, that gives me the 2 and the 7. 7 must be in one of those two positions where it aligns, look, in terms of columns 1 and 2. So 7, where does 7 go in column 3? It can't go in any of those cells, so it must be in one of these two positions. And in fact, we need to put 8 in one of these positions as well, don't we? An 8 can't go here because of this 8. So we can get the 8, we can get the 7, we can get the 7, we can get the 2. So 2 now, by because of the knight's move, forcing it not to be here, is placed. And this season, this is a knight's move away from that 2, so we get another 2 in the grid up there. These squares have got to be 5 and 8, and there's an 8 there, so we get the 8, we get the 5. That fixes the 5 at the top. This square's a 1 or a 9. This square's a 1 now, look. That fixes the 1 and the 9 at the top. There's got to be a 1 in one of these squares, and we're going to finish this. We are going to finish this remarkable puzzle. Um, I mean, I do not know what to tell you about this. This is one of the greatest 
greatest constructions I have ever seen in my life. Um, this has got to be four or nine. Don't know which yet. There's, ah, this eight sees that nine, eight, nine pair by knight's move. So therefore we can resolve all of this. That's got to be an eight now. These squares here have got to be one, four, and six. Now, this one sees that one by knight's move. If we got uh, the six is ruled out of this square by knight's move. This one we don't know anything about yet. Oh, that's also, look at that. That's, well, we get the five and the nine here. That's a five and that's a nine by Sudoku. But then we also get a one, four, six triple there as well. The same as here. This can't be four. Huh. Um, can't quite see what's seeing. Six, seven, nine. So this has got to be, maybe this column. This has got to be one, four or six. But nothing's actually reaching this square that's useful. This square, this nine sees that cell. So where do we put a nine in column one? It's got to go at the top here. So this square becomes a six or a seven. This square becomes one, four or six. There's an awful lot of one, fours and sixes here. This square can't be a one. Oh my goodness, this is a six or a seven. So we've now got a deadly pattern in those four squares, that's a bit worrying. But this six, seven does at least tell us that this is a one and this is a four. And that does give us a bit of traction in terms of these other cells. Oh, look, and it gets resolved by this six here. This six tells us how to resolve this pattern that otherwise would suggest the puzzle has two solutions. This puzzle definitely doesn't have two solutions. Seven here, seven here, six here, six here. One of the greatest puzzles I have ever seen, ever. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments. We'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.